Hello students, welcome to Reader's Workshop. Today, in honor of St. Patrick's Day, we're going to enjoy an Irish folk tale. But before we do, I want to remind you about some of the learning we've done about traditional tales. If you'll remember, just before winter holiday, we were reading some traditional tales and learning what traditions are. A tradition is something that a group of people from a country or maybe a group that's smaller than from a particular country or a family, right? Our families have traditions. So a tradition is something that a group of people do the same way over and over. It could be the stories they tell. It could be the clothing they wear, the food they enjoy. Those are all traditions. But we have what we call traditional tales. And one way to think of them is breaking them down into three groups. Folk tales. Folk tales are traditional stories in some cultures like the three little pigs you may have heard of or the gingerbread stories, right, that we enjoyed. But Native American cultures have traditional folk tales. Arrow to the Sun would be an example. All different cultures, different countries in Africa, different places all around the world in Asia have different folk tales. A fairy tale is kind of like a folk tale, but maybe we might consider it to have something a little more magical in it, maybe like a, a fairy, like in Cinderella, right? Maybe it has fairies or more magic. And then a nursery rhyme is a short little story, a short little tale that you learn when you are little and they rhyme. So a nursery is a place where little children are kept and can grow, like where their little crib is, their bed, just like you go to a nursery to buy baby plants, right? And a rhyme, right? And they're shorter. And an example of that would be some of the nursery rhymes from a book, say, called Mother Goose, from a collection of traditional nursery rhymes called Mother Goose. This is just one version of them. It could be things you probably learned in kindergarten, like Hickory Dickory Dock, the mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck one, the mouse ran down. Hickory dickory dock. That could have been one you've learned. Okay, so today we're going to enjoy an Irish folk tale that is retold and illustrated by Tommy de Paula. So I say retold because it's a traditional tale. People were telling this for a long, long time before Tommy de Paula was ever alive, but he heard of the story and decided he would like to retell it and illustrate it in his style. Jamie O'Rourke and the Big Potato. Wow, and I see a red-headed guy and a giant potato and a cute cat and a cute dog. Here we go. Oh, and on the back, <gasps> on the back is a leprechaun with a pot of gold. Here we go. And on the title page, oh, I see the green, green countryside of Ireland. So this is taking place in the country in Ireland. And there's a house at the top of the hill. And down at the bottom, I can see if that was the title character, there's Jamie O'Rourke and his cat and his dog. I wonder if that's his wife. Here we go. Jamie O'Rourke was the laziest man in all of Ireland. He would do anything to avoid working, especially if it had to do with growing potatoes. Ooh, I'm making a connection to the learning we did about how important potatoes were to Irish people. Oh, here he is laying in bed. <laughs> Jamie O'Rourke, his wife Eileen would say, will have nothing to eat this winter if you don't go out and dig up the pratties. That's what they call potatoes. Oh, the saints preserve us, Jamie would whine. Me back's as sore as can be. Sure as I'm telling you, wife, you'll have to dig them up yourself. I'll break in two if I so much as get up out of this bed. Oh my gosh, he's telling her she has to do the work. So Eileen, who had done all of the planting and watering and weeding anyhow, would go out to the tiny garden and dig up the smallest potatoes in Ireland, all because Jamie was too lazy to dig a larger garden and had no money to buy good potato seed. Oh, all that work and she's ending up with just little tiny potatoes. She makes me think a little of the little red hen who has to do all the work herself. Then poor Eileen wrenched her back 
and was laid up in bed. St. Bridget and the Virgin Mary herself must have smiled on Eileen O'Rourke. The village women said, why, it's the first rest she's had since she married Jamie O'Rourke. Oh, that's, those are the village women saying, well, it's almost good she hurt herself because she gets to have a rest now since she's, he's, she never rests. She does all the work in the family. When, with Eileen in bed, Jamie began to worry. No Eileen to dig meant no pratties all winter and no pratties meant no food. Oh, poor me, said, wailed Jamie. I'll starve to death. I'd best go to church and confess to Father O'Malley. There's no telling how soon old death will be knocking on my door. So even though it was midnight, Jamie set out for the church. He was about halfway down the hill when he heard singing and a tap, tap, tapping sound. Oh, he's on his way to church. Sure, and I wouldn't be knowing, Jamie whispered, but I swear, it's a leprechaun. And sure enough, sitting in a circle of ferns in the moonlight was a leprechaun singing and hammering tiny nails into the heels of the fairy boots he was making. Jamie knew just what to do. He crept up and grabbed the little man by his coattails and held firm. Let me go, let me go, the leprechaun shouted. Not on your life, Jamie said. Not until you show me where you keep your pot of gold. Oh, how mean. He's captured the leprechaun. Now, everyone in Ireland knows that leprechauns make boots and dancing shoes for the fairies who pay for them with gold. And everyone knows if you catch a leprechaun, he'll pay for his freedom with his pot of gold. But this leprechaun was cleverer than most. Oh, please, Mr. Mortal Man, he pleaded. I'm just starting out making fairy shoes, and I only have one or two pieces of gold in my pot. Won't you take a wish instead? Why, what would I wish for? Jamie asked. Me who's about to die of starvation because my wife is sick in bed and can't dig up the pratties for the winter. And they're such puny pratties anyhow. Well, said the leprechaun, reaching into his pocket, you could wish for the biggest pratty in the world. It would last all winter, and you wouldn't have to do anything more than plant this seed, water it, and wait. Oh, the one little seed will grow the biggest pratty, the biggest potato in all the world? That sounded wonderful to Jamie. Done, he shouted, and as the leprechaun dropped the seed into Jamie's hand, Jamie let go of his coattails, and off that leprechaun scampered. When Eileen heard what he had done, she was furious. Jamie O'Rourke, you're not only the laziest man in Ireland, but a fool as well, giving up a pot of gold for a pratty seed? Well, I'm going to plant this seed and water it, and you'll see, Jamie said, and out he went while wow, they're really having a grump at each other. Oh, oh my goodness. And Faith, Ellen did see, in no time at all, the biggest, finest potato plant had sprouted out of the ground, followed by the potato itself. It was so big, it pushed up not only all the dirt in the garden, but the garden shed and the corner of the cottage as well. Well, surely now it's ready to dig, Jamie said proudly. Wow, but I think the way stories go, there's got to be a problem, don't you think? Hmm. He hoed all around it, but he couldn't dig that pratty out of the ground. He got a beam and a big rock and tried to pry it out. He pushed and he pushed, but it wouldn't budge. As he was pondering what to do, his neighbor passed by on his way to the village. He couldn't believe his eyes. He couldn't wait to tell everyone in the village what he'd seen. And before you knew it, the hill up to Jamie's was filled with villagers coming to see the big potato. Oh, let's get a close up there. Look, they're all coming up to see the giant potato. Where did it come from? They asked. Jamie told them about the lucky night he had caught the leprechaun and how smart he had been. Why, anyone could have gotten a pot of gold, he bragged, but the biggest pratty in the world, 
Well, that took some doing. And I always think it's funny how the little cat and the dog are always peeking out. I think they're thinking, hmm, really? Was that the best plan? Let's see what the villagers think. However, did you outsmart a leprechaun? They all asked at once. Jamie hesitated and scratched his head. We'll help you dig up your potty, Jamie, if you'll tell us how you did it. And they grabbed shovels and hoes and started to dig. Oh, they all want to know the secret of how he tricked the leprechaun. I'm not sure he tricked anybody. They dug and they dug and they pushed and they shoved until the potato flew up out of its hole. It rolled down the hill faster and faster until it reached the bottom where it bounced up high and came to a stop, wedged between the stone walls on either side of the road. Look, tumble, 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 and plunk. It's blocking the road. What to do now? That pratty is so big that no one, no cart, nothing can get by it, the constable complained to Father O'Malley. That's like the policeman. How's a body could get in out and out of the village? Then they all looked at Jamie and said, It's your pratty. You'll have to move it out of our way. Well, Eileen spoke up, there's more than enough pratty for everyone. Why don't y'all just take some? Oh, Eileen's got a solution. She's offering for them to take some. So the villagers sawed and chopped and carted off huge pieces of potato while Jamie sat on the stone wall and watched. All winter long, everyone had potato to eat and eat and eat until no one wanted to see or hear of potato again. Oh, so like this is the before and after picture. Before with as many potatoes as they can eat. Oh, I'm getting tired of potatoes. Before happy, uh, after not so happy. Before, after, before, after. Too much of a good thing. In the spring, Jamie said, I saved a potato eye for a seed and it's just about time to plant it. <gasps> oh no, the villagers all cried. If you promise not to plant it, Jamie, we'll promise before St. Patrick and all the saints to see that you and Eileen always have plenty to cook and eat. We don't want another giant pratty around here. Jamie smiled and agreed. What a perfect life for a lazy man. And so you see, darling Eileen, Jamie told her, I wasn't such a fool with that leprechaun after all. And Eileen had to admit that Jamie O'Rourke was right. Oh, wow. So the villagers promised to give them food for life as long as they won't plant that pratty seed because otherwise they might end up with a big giant potato that will make another problem. And look at the end. There's a little leprechaun happy with his full pot of gold. I'm not sure he was being truthful when he said he only had a couple of coins. So anyway, but wait a minute. That wasn't just for fun, right? So let's think to ourselves, what was the main idea and what was the lesson or moral of the story? So what happened? Hmm. Jamie O'Rourke was kind of lazy, didn't want to have to do the work with the potatoes. He caught a leprechaun and wished for like as much potato as he could eat or like to never have not enough potatoes. But the potato made a problem but in the end, the villagers helped with the problem and Jamie and Eileen ended up with all the food they ever needed, right? Okay, so that's what happened in the story. But what was the lesson or moral of the story? Did we learn something from that? I'll be interested to hear what you think in a minute, okay? <laughs>